couple of points about alcohols. All alcohols are CNS depressants. As we've seen in the previous chapter, part of this action at least is mediated through GABA mimicking activity and the CNS depressant effect mediated through GABA receptors. When you look at alcohol metabolism, the end product of alcohol metabolism are acids. So one feature of alcohol overdose is that you may experience a metabolic acidosis. We're going to look at three different alcohols. Those would be ethylene glycol, methanol, and ethanol. Once again, look for the similarities in their metabolism. Alcohols are first metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase to an aldehyde. The aldehydes are further metabolized by aldehyde dehydrogenase into acids, and that's why you can get metabolic acidosis with alcohol poisoning. Let's start with ethylene glycol. Of course, ethylene glycol is found in antifreeze. Now, I don't know what would make somebody wake up one day and decide that this is a good day to drink antifreeze, but if you did, when you convert ethylene glycol into glycoaldehyde, you can certainly get nephrotoxicity. The metabolism of ethylene glycol can result in damage to your kidneys. Notice that glycoaldehyde is further metabolized into glycolic and oxalic acids, and those could be indicators or markers for ethylene glycol poisoning. Let's say you decided, I'm not going to drink ethylene glycol today. Rather, I'll drink some methanol. I don't know why you would do that either. Perhaps you're trying to preserve yourself because when you metabolize methanol, you form formaldehyde. Formaldehyde can damage the eyes. Vision damage, blurry vision, can result from methanol poisoning. Formaldehyde is further metabolized into formic acid. Again, it's important for you to know these pathways because these could be clues in a question as to what type of alcohol the person was drinking. What if you decided, I will just stick with good old ethanol? When you metabolize ethanol, you form acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde can cause nausea, vomiting, and headache. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask a friend. Acetaldehyde is further metabolized into acetic acid. Now, what is the standard antidote for somebody who overdoses on an alcohol like ethylene glycol or methanol? The standard classic antidote would be ethanol. Why do you give someone ethanol if they've overdosed on a different type of alcohol? Well, it's because ethanol is the best substrate for the first enzyme in the pathway, alcohol dehydrogenase. Ethanol will outcompete the other alcohols. Now, this type of strategy is what I call the lesser of two evils. Because when you give this person ethanol, for example, someone who's overdosed on ethylene glycol. What you're saying is, I would rather form acetaldehyde than glycoaldehyde. I would rather perhaps deal with nausea and vomiting and headache as compared to the more serious side effects like nephrotoxicity for ethylene glycol or vision damage with methanol. While I think that's a good strategy, you can obviously recognize there are some limitations to that. One of those being, you have to deal possibly with side effects of ethanol. In the text there is a drug called fomepazole. Fomepazole is a long-acting inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. You can argue that perhaps this is a better option than ethanol for alcohol poisoning, because fomepazole is going to block all alcohol metabolism. You're going to prevent the alcohol from being converted to its aldehyde form, and that prevents many of the side effects associated with alcohols. You also see down at the bottom of this table some notes about chronic alcoholism. A couple of things that you've probably previously discussed. Chronic alcoholism can result in hypoglycemia. Fatty liver can, can occur as well. Muscle wasting and possible gout are all signs of chronic alcohol use. In the margin is a note called In a Nutshell. It describes some drugs that can cause a disulfiram-like effect. If you look at alcohol metabolism, specifically looking at ethanol, the drug disulfiram inhibits acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. That's why the drug disulfiram can be used as a deterrent in alcoholics. In other words, if you place the alcoholic on disulfiram, you encourage them to not drink ethanol. 
Because what happens if they do? Because disulfiram is blocking the metabolism of acetaldehyde, consumption of ethanol would lead to nausea, vomiting, and headache due to an accumulation of acetaldehyde. Well, we have some drugs that can do the same thing. Of the list in the margin, the drug metronidazole is definitely one that you should focus on. When you place a patient on metronidazole, what advice do you give them? Don't drink alcohol. Metronidazole, like disulfiram, blocks acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, causing the accumulation of acetaldehyde. Other drugs can do this, but clinically speaking, metronidazole is clearly the most important. You have another note in the margin, a clinical correlate that deals with fetal alcohol syndrome. The features of fetal alcohol syndrome are listed there in the text. can include things like growth restriction, midfacial hypoplasia, microcephaly, and marked CNS dysfunction. This can also result in mental retardation. You see a visual to go along with this. It reminds us that alcohol, despite being water-soluble, can not only penetrate into the CNS, it can cross into the fetus and have teratogenic effects. To summarize this very short chapter, I've got two flow charts for you. The first one looks at options for alcohol intoxication. Those options would include either ethanol or fomepazole, the long-acting inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. We talked about the advantages of using one over the other. The fact that fomepazole is going to inhibit the metabolism of all alcohols, whereas ethanol is just simply going to compete with the other alcohols, but you can still form acid aldehyde. The other flowchart looks at options for alcohol withdrawal treatment. Certainly benzodiazepines, long-acting benzos, are very, very popular options for managing the symptoms of alcohol withdrawal. That was the strategy we discussed earlier of using the safer GABA drug when you're trying to overcome a more dangerous GABA drug. You should also consider thiamine and folic acid. These can be used to prevent Wernicke syndrome, the encephalopathy that might ensue from alcohol consumption. Now that we have finished the first couple of chapters, let's do some practice questions together. Here's the first one. Pause the video, try the question, and then we will discuss. So here we have a 26-year-old woman. She visits her podiatrist to have several bunions removed from her right foot. She chooses conscious sedation rather than general anesthesia. She's given IV midazolam to go along with local anesthetics. Partway through the surgery, she becomes agitated and combative, exhibits involuntary movements. So we determine that she's having a paradoxical reaction to midazolam. We want to know what drug to administer next. Since midazolam is a benzodiazepine, we obviously would like to use a drug that's a benzodiazepine receptor blocker. What drug blocks BZ1 and BZ2 receptors? That would be choice A, flumazenil. Here's question number two. Once again, pause the video, review the question, and then we will discuss. A three-year-old girl is brought to the emergency department by her parents, 10 minutes after they found her playing with an empty medication bottle. The bottle had 60 tablets of diazepam. Physical exam, laboratory studies show no abnormalities. The patient is at greatest risk for which of the following complications? In essence, we're trying to figure out how is overdose of a benzodiazepine going to manifest? Since benzos are GABA drugs and GABA is a CNS depressing neurotransmitter, how does the CNS depressant effect manifest? Choice D, respiratory depression, is the correct answer. If you are thinking hepatic failure, maybe you are thinking that because diazepam is metabolized by the liver, but that doesn't mean that it's going to cause liver damage. It's not going to form toxic metabolites, for example. You might have also thought about seizures. When I'm taking benzos, they're actually anticonvulsant medications. But perhaps if I rapidly discontinue, if I abruptly discontinue a benzodiazepine, that's what may cause a seizure. Here's question number three. Pause the video and we will discuss. A homeless middle-aged male patient presents in the emergency room in a state of intoxication. You note that he is behaviorally disinhibited and rowdy. 
He recently consumed about a pint of a red-colored liquid his friends were using to get high. He says his vision is like being in a snowstorm. What is the likely cause of this patient's intoxication? Well, of course, the blurry vision, the vision like being in a snowstorm, that is a real clue to this question. Vision damage is consistent with choice E, methanol. Remember, ethanol, nausea, vomiting, headache, ethylene glycol, nephrotoxicity. So this was methanol.